So this very echoey room is the before for the Lego City room. Let me show you around. And I apologize for the audio in here. As I say, we are very echoey because it is a completely empty room. I've tried to minimize it with a microphone, but I suspect there's still gonna be some echo in here. But this is the room that used to be Amy's bedroom. We cleared it out a couple of weeks ago. We've now finished clearing it out to a point. One thing we haven't been able to do is decorate because I've thrown my back out. So we're gonna have to work with this wallpaper that as you can see, Amy has absolutely wrecked with blue tack the way teenagers do. Uh, but the plan for this wall is to basically just cover it with Lego art anyway. At some point we are gonna decorate because I just wanna get the wallpaper off and paint that. And then I also want to paint that wall and that wall blue and like put some clouds and things on it because the Lego city is gonna be going across that side of the room there. But we've just run out of time to be able to do it before the furniture comes. Because as I'm recording this, the Ikea delivery comes tomorrow. We've got five Linman tables that are gonna be going all across there. We've also got enough lac shelves to run all the way across this width of the room here. And then likewise over here, there'll be a shelf running across there as well for display stuff. There's also gonna be a sixth Linman that is gonna be on wheels, which will go down there. This Billy bookcase is staying. I'm not sure about this table. This is an old Argos table that Amy had as her desk. If I can fit it in, in front here, I think it'll be handy for storage, but I'm not sure if it will fit once we've got the, the Lego City tables in. And I certainly don't want to block myself off from like standing here and leaning over and working on that part of the Lego City. So yeah, the plan is for the City to be all the way across there. Five tables, lengthways like that one is now. I think they're roughly the size of that table. So if you imagine five of those, I think they might be a touch longer than that, but five of those, it will just about fill the width of the room and come to about halfway along the depth. So we're gonna have quite a wide, not particularly deep city. I've also ordered a big piece of wood, which will allow us to have a second level on about half of it so that we can run a train around it, but only half of the train is visible and the other half is hidden with the city on the top to make up for the, the minimal amount of room that we're working with. We'll then have the shelves on here to display sets above the city. I'm not quite sure how high to get them. I need to measure that up this afternoon because once we've got the table in and then a little bit of height to allow for the trains, you're probably coming to about here and then you need to be able to fit the Avengers Tower in. So these shelves are gonna be quite high to the top of the room, just like one level of them. So I wanna be able to fit that Avengers Tower in. Um, and then over here, like I say, there'll be a shelf that goes across. We'll still have this, which eventually will be for display, not storage. There's lots of unbuilt sets there at the moment. The unbuilt sets and the boxes and all the stuff like that will be stored under the city tables. We've also got a load of drawer units for loose pieces, which I'll show you in a second when I bring them back in. But yeah, we'll have a shelf across there for display. And then the desk on wheels here. So when I'm just working in here or building in here, I can have the desk up against the wall and have a little bit of room to move around in behind. But then when I'm streaming in here, which I will do from time to time. I can pull the desk away from the wall, maybe angle it a little bit, get some lighting set up and get a better angle for streaming than I have in my current office. So this is it as an empty shell. I'm now gonna bring in all of the stuff that I've put on the landing to make it an empty shell, which is a lot more Lego and storage and stuff. And then the next thing you see will be tomorrow with the furniture turning up and then hopefully the furniture assembled all in this video. It's safe to say I'm very, very excited. I've shown an incredible amount of patience doing Anna's Lego room before mine, but now I really am ready for it to be up and running. And after much lugging stuff around, this is where we are. So we've got the new blackout curtains in to, uh, to protect the Lego from the deadly sun. Um, I've ordered some brighter light bulbs because it is pretty dull in here. Although I have got a couple of Elgato key lights for the stream area but just the room in general is very dark. So I think we're gonna need a daylight light bulb and maybe some lighting in the corner as well to light everything up. But this is the Lego collection as it stands currently, obviously without Anna's stuff that's up in her room. So this is my stuff and the Lego City stuff. So yeah, we've got some building to do. I've also got 10 kilograms of bulk Lego that I've bought. I've got the start of a storage system up and running, there'll be videos and all of this stuff in due course. 
but I actually quite like the desk there. I'm thinking if I can fit the new one in here, the one on wheels, and then have the city over this side, this might actually work as a little streaming area. Once all this is clear, I could put the camera and a key light here and basically sit here facing out this way and use this area to stream and do builds and things. So that table might be staying, but it is fair to say there is a lot to work through, lots of bulk to sort, lots of sets to build, obviously the city to get cracking with. I am so excited and so ready. I just need these tables to arrive now. And that should be the next thing you see. So it is the next day, the Ikea delivery has arrived. So we've got two WWE chairs, just so they can be folded up and put out the way when we're not sitting in here. Six Linman tabletops, five white, one like wood colored. Um, we've then got 20 of the Adil's legs, which will be for five of the tables, the five that go across there for the Lego City. We've also got four of the, I can't remember what those ones are called, but they're the ones that go on wheels. So we've got one that is a little bit mobile, I can move around the room, and then three lack shelves. One long one, one short one, the long and the short should fit across there. And then the other short one is for across here. As you can see, I've also made a start on making some, uh, some Mills plates. Um, three down, 45 to go by my calculations. And now we have to wait another day because tomorrow we have the IKEA handyman man who's gonna come round and assemble all of this for me. If I hadn't have thrown out my back, I obviously could have done the tables by myself. My track record with shelves is abysmal, so I would have needed an adult to help with the shelves anyway. I think it's costing us about seven pounds a table to have them assembled, so I just figured. Let's not hurt myself. Let's get someone to come and do the whole lot. So the next part of the video will jump forward 24 hours again and we should then have the shelves up, the tables out and be ready to start doing Lego in here, which is very exciting. Oh, folks, it is now tomorrow again and I am starting to get very, very excited. The furniture is in, the furniture is assembled. You are sitting on my new build slash stream desk let me show you around i don't know where to put this guy yet he doesn't really have a place in the new room just yet we'll figure it out he is quite large in quite a small room so if we start from outside the room and in we go and straight away you are hit by the wall of tables and my giraffe friend so as previously described we have the five Ikea Lindman tables across that side of the room. We've got four now, we did have two, we've now got four of the really useful drawers that slot under them perfectly. You can't put the wheels on, they do come with wheels, but they don't fit under these tables with the wheels. They fit under the old Argos one that we had, um, but because the Ikea ones are that bit thicker, you do have to take the wheels off, but we've got those in for storage. I'm deliberately leaving the middle table clear of having drawers under it, because that's where I'm gonna crawl under because the space under the, uh, the tables is gonna be where we store empty boxes, instruction manuals, the backlog. It will all go under there so that it's not constantly in the way. Um, but the way the drawers are set up, we've got a few of them that I've already put all my picker brick into. So we've got drawers that are full of bricks. We've got drawers that have got little storage containers in of various sizes. I just got the storage containers on Amazon. I'll link to them in the uh, in the description below. It will be an affiliate link because, you know, this was expensive. Gots to pay those bills, but they are pretty handy for fitting into here. So there's nothing in those ones at the end there. Um, we've also got this thing that is left over from when this was Amy's bedroom, which currently has nine kilograms of bulk Lego that I bought off of Brick Bin uh, because... I need to fill up the drawers with something. There will be a video in the near future where we sort through that and basically start to get a little bit of a parts library on the go. Then this side of the room, we have my little uh, WWE solid steel plastic chairs. Um, I've got two of those, so if Anna ever wants to join me in here, she can. This Linman is on wheels and also has a nicer tabletop so that it looks better in the streams. I think I'm going to keep the Argos table in here because what I'm thinking is we could stand the camera and maybe the Elgato key light airs which we've got down there they could potentially stand on this table when I'm streaming or doing build videos and it just keeps that little bit of separation between me and where the camera and the lights are which is good for 
getting more of me in shot. We don't want the camera to be right up in front of me, but also means that if I wobble this table, that one won't wobble. So we won't have the camera wobbling. The other option, which we might end up doing, is getting rid of that old white table. And then once all this is under here, we can put a camera a little bit further back still on a tripod, but then I'm not quite sure where I would put the key lights. So I think we're sticking like this for now. It is subject to change. We've then got some shelves or one shelf on this wall, which will have some display stuff on. I know the wallpaper is a mess. There's not a lot I can do about that in the time frame that we had, but that is very soon going to be covered in Lego art. The centerpiece of this wall is going to be the new Batman Arkham, uh, sorry, Batman Gotham City set that releases very, very soon. That will be going up on that wall. And then eventually this Billy bookcase will be for display as well. And then we've got two more of the LAC IKEA shelves, one long one, one slightly short one going across the width here. I don't think we're gonna be rotating the display on top of there very often, because it's quite the lean to get to it. I can just about lean and get to it. But once I've got stuff on this table, it's probably gonna get slightly harder to do. We've got the blackout curtains in. I have now got a daylight bulb in there as well, which certainly lights the room a lot better than it was before. Like I say, there'll be the two key lights on here to light me and builds when I'm doing that. I think I either want some lighting on the underside of these shelves or maybe lamps in the corner, just to make sure that the city itself is lit. You can see the shadow that's being cast because we've only got one point of light in the room. I don't want loads of shadows and me when I'm filming the city in the shot. So I need a source of light from behind and to the side of the cities as well. You can see the corners do get pretty dark. So we do have the potential to shift the whole lot a little bit that way so that we could fit a lamp in at either side. The wall of fame is gonna go here. So that's the channel members. If you haven't looked into channel membership yet, you can get yourself in the wall of fame over there. And it also covers up whatever that damage to the wall was that Amy did when this was still her room. And uh, I think that's everything to show you right now. In fact, there is one more thing to show you. See the lighting in here definitely needs work. And that is how many base plates we can fit on. I've not tested this yet. Full confession, I have gone for third party base plates um, because we need so many of them. And this has already been a very expensive enterprise. I can't be buying 50 or 60 base plates at eight pounds a pop directly from Lego. They seem fine. Um, we've got them in lots of different colors, but Let's see how many we fit on here. I think, according to my calculations before, it should be exactly right to go four deep and 12 wide. That's what we're aiming for. Let's see if that actually works like that. So we're sort of four deep with a little bit of a, it's like a two or three stud overlap at the end. I'm not entirely sure how because the tables are supposed to be a meter and each base plate is supposed to be 25 centimeters. So I guess these numbers aren't quite as accurate as I hoped they would be. I don't think that's the end of the world because we'll probably it will probably be the train track running along the edge, which will have like a four stud gap anyway. So this is basically just going to be overhang. The danger, of course, is me just knocking into it. But I guess once it's mills plated all over, that's going to be less of a problem. Let's see how many we can get across the width of it as well. Planning is all well and good, but obviously only gets us so far. And now we're dealing with reality. And the reality is the space isn't quite as big and perfect as I thought it would be, but it's still good. And we're not gonna be setting anything up too permanent just yet anyway, because I have ordered a piece of wood, which should cover from probably about where those base plates are back across the first three tables here which is gonna be an elevated area of the city. I've got some little um, stand things to put it on as well um, so that we can have the train running along the front here exposed and then going into a tunnel and underneath what will then be the bulk of the city here. I have measured and I don't think once I've got the wall, the wall in on the extended platform, we're not gonna fit the Avengers tower on that and under this shelf. So I think my Marvel area is gonna come this way and we'll probably have the Daily the daily Bugle and the Avengers Tower on this end where they've got nothing above them because that end is going to be the Wall of Fame. But I think, I think it works. And now of course the fun and the work begins. This is, I wanna just manage some expectations 
this isn't going to be a project that is complete in a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. This is going to be an ongoing, long-term thing developing this Lego City. Because at the end of the day, we don't want it to finish just like that. Because once it's done, you can't play with it anymore, can you? The fun is in the building it. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to try and get it right. I imagine it will go through multiple iterations. If you've got suggestions for ways to use the space, ways to improve the lighting, audio, I think there probably is a little bit of an echo. I'm trying to minimize it with a, with a mic, but I imagine there's a little bit of an echo in here now. But once we start to fill in all of these empty flat surfaces, that should minimize anyway. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about the audio. Um, but lighting definitely needs to improve. And now I've got to figure out how to get the train set in and how to sort the raised platform above the train set so I can then start, because I've got to do that before I can do anything else, because I can't build the bulk of the city until the platform that the bulk of the city is going to be on is there. So I'm doing lots of research on Lego trains, doing lots of research on roads, raised platforms, walls to hide the legs. and There's lots of research going on. If you can point me towards any resources of that kind of thing, very much welcome. Um, and I imagine there'll be another update video in the very near future. I'm not quite sure how frequently the updates will be. Basically, when something significant happens, I'll give you an update and show you it. My plan is to literally take you from the empty room you saw at the start of this video to an all singing, all dancing, awesome looking Lego City by the end of the series, by the end of the playlist. Um, which could be several years long. Who knows? So strap yourselves in. This is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, we'll still have the shopping halls the, uh, and other bits and bobs of Lego content as well. But I'm very excited and I need to start playing with my train. So if you've enjoyed this video and if you're excited for where the Lego City is going to go, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on this video for me. Subscribe to the channel because this is just the beginning. Now is the time to subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.